When you hear the word Schengen, you probably fall into one of three categories. First are people who've never heard of the Schengen. Second, you've heard of it and you know it's related to Europe somehow. And third, it's the bane of your travel planning where you have calculators and calendars out while you try to figure out how long you can stay where. Whichever category you're in, if you're planning a trip to Europe, the Schengen area is a concept that you need to be familiar with. Let me explain. Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter by demystifying the Schengen area. Maybe it's that name, Schengen, is a little bit weird, and we'll get to why it's named the Schengen area, but maybe that word Schengen confuses and throws a lot of people off, but it's actually a pretty relatively straightforward concept. The Schengen area provides a lot of advantages for travelers, especially on shorter trips. And if you're staying longer, it might get a little bit more complicated. So here's everything you need to know. This might vary depending on when you're watching this video. But for now, the Schengen area comprises of 27 and soon to be 29 European nations. The Schengen area is not the same as the European Union, although they overlap quite a bit. Norway, for example, is part of the Schengen area, but not in the European Union. Also, Ireland and the United Kingdom are notably not part of the Schengen area, but before Brexit, the United Kingdom was part of the European Union, but still not a member of the Schengen area. I'm going to pause here for a minute because a lot of these maps that you've been watching on the screen can throw a lot of people off, so let's just clarify it really quick. The Schengen area is a group of European countries, but for travel purposes, you can simplify things by forgetting about these borders for a second. And you might be thinking, hey, I've got a trip planned to Germany and the Netherlands. So what does all this Schengen stuff mean for me? It depends on where you're from. But to give you an example, if you're an American citizen who is traveling to a Schengen country, remember a country that's on this list, you have a visa free stay of 90 days with it every 180 days. So in the case of a trip that's three weeks or 21 days, let's say you plan on spending 10 of those in Germany and 11 in the Netherlands. It's all part of your 90 day allowance. It's not 90 days in Germany and then 90 days in the Netherlands. It's 90 days in the entire Schengen area. Again, all of the countries that are on this list. It's kind of like the United States. So if you get a visa to travel to the US, it doesn't matter whether you're going to California and New York and Florida, all in that same trip. The days are counted when you enter the country and then they're stopped being counted when you leave the country. So if you fly in from New York and then leave from Los Angeles, it doesn't really matter because you're in the United States. And the Schengen area kind of operates in a very similar way. You can think of the Schengen area member countries as US states when it comes to travel. There are open borders between them and you can visit Germany, Spain, then hop over to Greece without having to go through immigration. But your stay is counted by the total number of days that you are in the Schengen area, not in each country. That's typically why you'll only go through passport control when you first enter the Schengen area. Let's say you fly into Berlin and then you leave the Schengen area from, let's say, Amsterdam. Between flying from Germany to the Netherlands, you won't go through passport control. Does that make sense so far? So we're talking in generalities and each Schengen country in times of serious threat can impose border restrictions temporarily like they did during the COVID-19 pandemic. But overall, it means if you're in one of these countries, you have border free access to the others. Bulgaria and Romania are joining the Schengen on March 31st, 2024, with exceptions for land crossings until the end of 2024. So if you're visiting those specific countries by bus or a car from Hungary or Greece, be prepared to go through passport control. For visa-free travelers visiting anywhere in the Schengen area, as you know by now, reiterating that is all of these countries on this list, if you're visiting on a vacation for two weeks or a month or a shorter trip in general, the once a year kind of trip thing, the Schengen area's open borders are a big advantage. You can travel freely between these countries with no cumbersome border inspections. And going back to our US state analogy, it would be like driving from Virginia to Maryland. For those shorter trips to Europe, maybe a couple of weeks, once or twice a year, then the Schengen area is something that you don't really have to think about. Let's say you're spending a week in Rome for a friend's wedding, then a week in Berlin before heading home, then there's not much else to it. That's a total of two weeks in the Schengen area. Now, as another example for American citizens who get 90 days out of every 180 in the Schengen area, let's say after that Berlin trip, you want to go to London. Since the United Kingdom is not in the Schengen area, let's say they allow American citizens for 90 days. Those 90 days are counted completely separately since the United Kingdom is not in the Schengen area. For a lot of you who are taking shorter trips, the whole days thing might be a little bit confusing because for shorter trips, let's say you're going for a week or two to Germany, even if you're visa free, you might not realize that there's actually a countdown happening, but the countdown is like 30 or 90 days. 
And so it never really comes into play since your trips are a lot shorter than that. And the Schengen area really simplifies things when it comes to travel. So let's say you're taking a trip from France to Germany, to Sweden, to Denmark, you can go to all of those countries and you don't have to worry about how long can I stay in France and then Germany and then Sweden and Denmark. If you have access to the Schengen area, you can basically go between all of those countries within your allotted time. So if it's 90 days out of every 180, you can just calculate 90 days. So I'm going from France to Portugal to Spain, all those Schengen countries, then you don't have to do all of these calculations per country. If you've traveled in parts of the world between a couple of countries that happen to be close together that are not in the Schengen area, you know that different visa requirements and different stays that you're allowed, all that stuff can become really complicated to calculate and kind of annoying. So the Schengen area really makes those things a lot easier. But now if you want to stay longer in Europe, then you only get 90 days in that entire Schengen area. So you can't spend three months in France and then three months in Germany all in the same trip. And if you're staying longer, that's when you got to start calculating your days to make sure that you're not overstaying. Let's say you get 90 days in the Schengen area out of every 180 days. That means you can't spend two months in Germany and then two months in France because that's four months. And even though they are two separate countries, because they are in the Schengen area and all of your days there are counted as one in the Schengen area, that means you will have overstayed your visa. There are a lot of travelers every year who accidentally overstay in the Schengen area without realizing it. So let me give you an example of a situation where you might find yourself in if you don't know how the Schengen area rules work. And let me tell you how you can avoid this mistake. So let's say you're a US citizen, you live in New York City, and you're planning to spend some time in Europe. You book a flight from New York City to Copenhagen and Denmark being in the Schengen area and Copenhagen being your first entry into the Schengen area, you get a stamp in your passport bringing your total time in the Schengen area to two months or 60 days. You then find a cheap flight to Albania, you want to check it out, and you leave Berlin for a flight to Albania. Because Albania is not in the Schengen area, when you're in Berlin, you will go through passport control where you get a stamp leaving the Schengen area. You arrive in Albania, you spend your month there, and then you book a flight to Spain. Because Spain is your first entry back into the Schengen area, you'll go through passport control and you'll get a stamp in your passport. You then decide to take the train into Portugal and then take the train into France where you have a flight from Paris back to New York City. You've spent two months in this trip to the Schengen area, leaving your total in the last six months at four months. You've now officially overstayed, but going on the train between Portugal and Spain and France, nobody noticed since there's no passport control. But when you get to Paris for your flight back to the United States, you'll go through passport control where the officer, if they're counting properly, are going to realize that you've overstayed since they're going to see the stamps in Denmark and then out in Germany. They're not going to count the time in Albania. And then they're going to count the time from Spain and all the way up to now in Paris. You've now overstayed and you could face a fine or a ban from the Schengen area or both. And you don't want to be in that situation. So make sure you know the Schengen rules for your citizenship before you arrive. I'm using countries that have visa-free access to the Schengen area as an example, like the United States, but the requirements for your country or the United States, it might change by the time you're watching this. So make sure you check with the appropriate embassy to know what the requirements are for you and how long you can stay in the Schengen area. The one concept that you should walk away with is that the Schengen area is considered one entity when it comes to travel. So if you get 90 days in the Schengen area, you get 90 days in all of these 29 countries. It is not per country it is your total time in the Schengen area. And now that you know what the Schengen area is, you know that means if you get 90 days, that's 90 days in the entire Schengen area, not 90 days in Germany and then 90 days in Greece. It all counts under one umbrella. Oh, and remember the name Schengen. Since you've gotten this far in the video, let me explain where that comes from. It's actually the name of a town in Luxembourg on the border between France and Germany, where the Schengen Agreement and Convention were signed in 1985 and 1990. Thanks for watching. I hope this clears things up for you about the Schengen area. But if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week and I'll see you in the next video.